General Sir Michael Rose commanded UN forces in Bosnia at the time Ratko Mladic was in charge of the Bosnian Serb army. General Rose was at the centre of attempts to procure a ceasefire around Sarajevo. He dealt with all the major players in the Balkans war and Tim Cooper asked him what he'd made of Ratko Mladic. Well, he was a, a classic uh, product of the Stalinist school of, mil of, mil of, of warfare. I mean, he saw the starvation of civilians, uh, the besieging of cities, and the s wholesale slaughter of civilians as instruments of war. That's what he was trained to do by the Soviets, and that's what he did. Uh, w w uh, we find it difficult to understand that anyone could do that in the West, brought up in our um, liberal uh, and humane way of, of, uh, of life. We find it very hard to think that there are people who are brought up in such a brutal background. The second thing you have to remember about Mladic is he was highly intelligent, uh, a hero to his own soldiers, and, high, and extremely manipulative. He would turn any uh, situation around to his advantage if he possibly could. On a personal level, though, what was he like as a man, and did you get on with him? Well, I didn't get on with him. I was just a, a mediator having to deal with him. I mean, he didn't like me because I bombed him. And when I did go and bomb him, I didn't go for his frontline units. I went for his headquarters and nearly killed him. I killed a lot of his friends and he wouldn't speak to me for six weeks uh, following that at NATO attack, which of course stopped uh, Gerasda being overrun in April 1994. Uh, so our, our relationships were uh, difficult, but we maintained some kind of correspondence because we had to. But how did you reconcile having to deal with a man whose actions that you doubted? Well, that is the price you have to pay of being a peacekeeper. You're dealing with uh, horrendous people who have created humanitarian crises uh, within their own countries. And the, the price of having to help the people of that country is that you have to deal with the warlords on, on all sides. What are your thoughts now that he's been brought to justice, he's in The Hague, and why do you think this has happened now? Uh, what you see is definitely not what you get in the Balkans, and I wonder whether some negotiated deal hasn't been done with the Serb government by which uh, Mladic, who is probably going to have to go to hospital anyway, is now going to go to The Hague and to a hospital in The Hague where he'll get extremely good medical care. Uh, and in return for sacrificing himself and his liberty, he gets that. But he also gets the benefit of having been seen to uh, to allow um, Serbia uh, to j join the European Union. And of course there's a reward that is going to be paid at some point and I wonder how much of it goes to the Mladic family. I'll just talk about the broader Bosnian picture if I can and from what you've said there was some progress in 1994 with the UN peacekeeping mission there but how did that deteriorate to the stage where in 1995 there's a full-scale civil war taking place, a lot of humanitarian suffering, massacres taking place as well. Uh, what is the fault here? Who is to blame for this? Obviously there's a fault of the people on the ground who were determined to go back to war. By the end of 1994, uh, all sides had determined to go back to war regardless of the UN's peacekeeping effort. And the reason for that is that the NATO and the Americans had been systematically undermining the UN arms embargo, which they had signed up to and which they were actually responsible for uh, uh, um, uh, effecting uh, in the air and on the ground and at sea. Uh, but they were breaking it, arming the Muslims and the Croats, uh, telling them that they could uh, re recover their lost territories by force of arms. And that, of course, made the UN position impossible. So what NATO and the Americans did was to destroy the people working on the ground, their credibility and the, and the, the, the mission that they were involved in, a peacekeeping mission, uh, but they were unable to influence events on the ground themselves and by crashing the UN's um, peacekeeping process uh, you ended up with terrible things happening like Srebrenica.